Well, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I said, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your praise ought to fill the show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. God is good. God is good, and he's shown them worthy of your praise. Well, preacher, you don't know what God did for woman. Let me call the road. He woke you up this morning, started you on your way, put food on your table. You in your right mind. All your bills are paid. You got food in your refrigerator. You ain't in the hospital. God is protecting you through a pandemic. You showed sure up blessed on this morning. God has been good to us. And David said like this. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. And let me tell you, I don't know about y'all, but after six, seven months of being disconnected from the family of God, it sure feels good to be in the house of God, among the people of God, worshiping and praising his holy and his divine name. Because I am, um, I came here right at the time that the pandemic had just really fully went into effect and the churches and everything had got shut down. So some of y'all ain't seen since I got to do all. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you on this morning. So glad that you all have come out um, on this morning. And we want to thank our viewing audience this morning as well for viewing with us online. We're just so thankful um, that you have tuned in with us here on this morning. And we pray that you would do us a favor as we ask you to do here. Invite somebody to church on this morning. Invite somebody to church. You ain't got to worry about going by the house and knocking on the door, worry about them not answering the door. You ain't got to worry about inviting them to church and they say, yeah, I'm going to come and you get there and they don't show up. You ain't got to worry about none of that. All I need you to do is right there on your screen, hit share, they'll start a watch party, do something, share the message, invite somebody to church on this morning. Um, if you would, this morning we're going to be in Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 24. That was a, a little boy, him and his family, they were sitting down for dinner. And the little boy looked at his mama and uh, said, Mom, are birds good to eat? She said, son, don't ask me like that. Then they at the table, you know, whatever. And she said, um, later on when they got home, she said, son, why did you ask me that? She said, oh, because the little boy said it was a bug in your suit. But it's gone now, so it's all right. <laughs> Genesis chapter 14, beginning at verse number 18, concluding at verse number 24. The grass withers and the flower dove shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. And I just want to take a moment. I know we don't give shout outs. That's we want to touch the crowd. We don't give shout outs. But I just want us to give a shout out to our elders, to our leadership here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. Let's give them a hand. Because it is them that has guided us that have made decisions on throughout this pandemic. And we need to thank God that we have men of God that are watching out for our spiritual well-being. And, and, and let us remember to keep them in prayer. Because the devil ain't after you, he after them. Because if he get them, he got you by default. So let us so let, let us keep them, let us keep them in prayer. We know that we have been in a series of lessons here over these past six weeks. And we've been dealing with the man by the name of Abram. Abram. All right. We've been dealing with Abram. And we met Abram, first of all, when he was still at his daddy's house. He was out there, way out there in the plains of Mamre at his father's house, tending to his father's business. God came out there in the plains of Mamre and he said, Abraham, Abraham, leave everything that you got. Get you, get up and leave and go to a land that I am going to show you. Abraham then becomes the first man that follows God by faith. He says, I'm going to make you an example of what it means to walk with me and to follow me by faith. We've been with Abraham as he went down into Egypt. He took that road down there. That trip that he took down there really wasn't that successful. We've been with Abraham as he left out of Egypt going up toward Canaan. Got a little blessings there. Things are going well. And we've even been with Abraham as he was fighting his nephew. 
We've been with Abraham when him, that last week, when him and his nephew, they got into it and they've had to separate. And after that, God revisits with Abram and he goes back and revisits the promises that he made to Abram. But here today, we're going to be dealing with something that I think is going to bless each and every single one of us. Let us go to verse number 18 and we're going to conclude at verse number 24. The Bible says, in Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed them and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Bring me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Verse 24, save only that which the young man hath eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me are near Eshcol and Mamre, let them take their portion. Um, I want to give for uh, our subject um, the, today a little word called integrity. Integrity. There's a word in the English language that we hear used from time to time, yet it is a word that we rarely see modeled in our day to day. And that word is, as I just said, integrity. It means the following thing. Possession of firm principles, the quality of possessing and steadfastly adhering to high moral principles or professional standards. When a person is said to have integrity, we mean that they have high moral standards. We mean that they operate in a way that causes them to seek the right way first. The right way first. This is the behavior that God would have all of his children to exhibit, not some of the time, but to exhibit all of the time. And one of the greatest things that can be said about your life is that you are a person of integrity. This is the behavior that is modeled by Abram in this passage. In Genesis chapter 14, it is a glimpse inside the life of this great man of God. There are three areas in his life that are dealt with in this passage. And in these things, Abram demonstrates the fact that he is a man of integrity. And, and let's examine this this morning. First of all, this chapter tells us about a brutal invasion by a confederation of powerful kings who occupied the region that was just above them. And if you were to go there today, you would end up in Iraq. You would end up in Iran because that's, that's where this is taking place. And, 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 and even Sodom had been a tributary which had some issues going on there. And when Abram heard that his nephew, who he had just separated from, we read on last week, Abram told him, he said, hey, if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And we know that Lot chose the plains of Jordan because they looked well watered and the blessed for feeding his, for feeding his, his flock and for his herds. And we know that that place ended up not being the good place that Lot thought it was going to be. But rather it ended up being something that caused him to lose his entire family because they got caught up in the sins and in the allurements down there in Sodom. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Things can look so good to you. You know, they tell the old saying, oh, that the grass ain't always green on the other side. And let me tell you, so many times our flesh can create within us such a strong desire for something that even though you know it ain't good for you, you're still chasing after it. Even though you know you don't need it, you're still running after it, trying to possess it because that what speaks to your flesh. This is the only time that we see Abel. When he heard that Lot was in trouble, the Bible says that Abram went to war. Yes, sir. 
prepping. He's in the ring. He's getting ready because he knows there's something coming up that he needs to be prepared for. Well, as a child of God, you don't know when the trials of life are going to come up against you. You don't know when storms are going to arise in your life. You don't know when you are going to have to put your faith to the test. So that's why you have to what? Always be ready for a spiritual battle. Now, we are at war, I said, all the time. But there are times when we need to take the fight to the end. Come on now. Come on now. I said we are at war all the time. But there are times when we need to take the fight to the end. When it is time to stand against evil. Yeah. When it is time to defend or rescue a brother or sister that is falling by the wayside. When it is time to stand in the gap for somebody else, we got to, as 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 said, we got to fight the good fight of faith. May we always demonstrate great integrity in the battles that we fight. You don't have to fight on the hand of it. You can still be a child of God and win the battle. Now, when it is time to stand, we got to stand on the Lord's side, and we do so by standing on the side of right. I don't care that you're mom. Take a step back, but you might sway. I don't care that you're dead. I don't care who it is. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. And you ought not give in or give up your integrity simply because it's somebody that you know or somebody that you're friends with. Be friend enough to tell somebody what they need to hear. Be friend enough. Don't, don't, don't be a person that you just want to tell people what they want to hear so they'll be your friend, so they'll be on your side, so they'll invite you to the party, so they'll invite you to my I'm going to tell you what it is that you need to hear because it's danger coming down the road and you need to be aware of the things that you are coming up against. Come on. Now, we need to be ready, I said, at all times for that. And, uh, and the way we win the battle and how well we're going to do in the battle is, 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 is all dependent upon how well you prepare for the battles of this life. Now, we need to, as I said, demonstrate the integrity in not just some of the things that you do, but in everything that you do, you need to do it with integrity. Now, Abram had faith to make war, and he encountered a facilitator to help him in his worship of the Lord. Now, notice some truths about this man that he went to. He went to a name by the name of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. He was called a king. He was a ruler, a man of great influence, a man of great wealth, and a man of great power. Melchizedek. He is the king of Salem. The word Salem means peace. And in the ancient name for the city of Jerusalem, his name means king of righteousness. When he comes, he brings bread and wine. Both are products of the area and are given to the weary patriarch to help him after his battle. He is also a priest of God. Abram wasn't the only man around who knew who yes. God was. Yes. Abram was not the only man around that had a relationship with God. And listen, this man prays for Abram. Yes. And he pronounces a blessing upon him yes. and upon his life. Yes. Now, this mysterious man is one of the earliest and clearest pictures of Jesus Come on. in the Bible. Come on. Come on. For the sake of reference, let's look at another passage that deals with Melchizedek. But, um, dig a cabin, if you would, Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 1 through 4. Yes. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. Amen. Because I, I want to say this and I want to prove this for anybody that says that Jesus is just any old regular man, just like anybody else, and that he was just, you know, just born of a woman like anybody else. But there was something special about this man. He didn't just appear when Mary birthed him, he's been around since the beginning of time. Now, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 through 4, what does the Bible say? For this man, Chesedek, king of Salem, 
priest of the Most High God, uh -huh. who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first beginning by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descendant, without descendant. Having neither beginning nor day, that's it, mm -hmm. nor end of life, mm -hmm. but made like unto the Son of God, like unto a yeah. God and priest continuously. Mm -hmm. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoil. Amen. Mm. We're gonna get to that tenth in a minute. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there in just a minute. But 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 but, but. he had a mom. <laughs> Who is he? Somebody to be able to look at you and say, Ooh, that's a child 
of God. When we give our lives to him in obedience and in worship, God is honored and we are blessed and the world is given what we sang about earlier, his life. The world is given his life. Now, Abram, the Lord's grace in his life, he showed God how great he was by tithing back to the work of the Lord. Come on, pray to the Lord now. Amen. It sounds good, though. Come on, yeah, yeah. Come, on. Yeah. come on. Come on. Should I stay there for a bit? Yeah. 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 Come on, preach, man. Come on, preach. Well, since you, since you insist. Yes, come on. Come on. Abram, the man of God, yes, sir. The, the man that God chose. Yes, sir. To follow him by faith. Yes, sir. Amen. He was what we would describe as the biggest man of that day. Everybody knew who Abraham was. Because if you wanted to get to God, you need to talk to somebody like Abraham. Oh, but Abraham, even Abraham, Come on. Yes, sir. gave this man a tenth Come on, praise of everything praise that he got. Come on, on, praise praise Listen, he didn't give him a tenth of what he had left over. Come on, praise Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. He gave him a tenth of everything that he had. And you want to see the blessing in it? When Abraham paid tithes, the Bible says that his great, great, great grandson, who hadn't even born yet, was paying him his way. So how is it that somebody that ain't even born, whose daddy ain't even born, whose granddaddy hadn't even been born, is being blessed by something that I am doing? Because when Abraham paid tithes to Mount Tebedee, he was setting up something for generations that were going to come after him. And I tell you, you don't just give to God expecting God to give something back to you. But you want to give because you know, hey, I'm only able to live through and operate as I do because God has blessed you with what I have. So since he blessed you with what I got, off the rip, off the top, all the give back to God because he has given back to me. A close hand can receive that. But when you give back to God, can I tell you something? The song said, you can't be God yet. No matter how you try. Somebody said it like this. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing to where you only have room enough to receive. But be careful. You don't need to realize. When, when you go into God, you ask asking God, say, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. And you ain't getting it. You can only withdraw what you got in. <laughs> It's tight, but it's right. It's tight, tight, it's tight, but it's right. When Abraham won the battle, when Abraham won the fight, he also took possession of everything, all the spoils from the cities that they had taken over. This would have represented a tremendous amount of wealth that he had accumulated while they were waging war on these people. Now, let's observe how Abram deals with the money and this is going to deal with the integrity of Abram. The king of Sodom offers to allow Abram to keep everything that he has won. Surely this must have been a great temptation. Can you imagine? Just imagine um, Deacon Campbell and if it happened, remember me, you just walk up on 20 million. You remember what I said? I didn't say remember them. I said remember me. You know. Um, you know, and, and just say you lost up on $20 million and, and, and the police say, oh, you can keep it all. We, we're not going to say anything or you just take 20 and give us the rest. I mean, there's only one answer for the question. You, you're going you're gonna to take the 20 million. You know, you know anybody, you know, there, there, there's no answer for the question. Obviously, this must have been a great temptation for Abel. I could have it all. Note this, I think we as human beings are more tempted in the area of money than in any other area. I learned something and it's kept me on the straight and narrow and hopefully it'll keep me on the straight and narrow. There are three downfalls of a preacher. There's power, there's money, and sex. 
PMS. We got it too. Just like you know the sister, just a different, just a different way. And those are the greatest downfalls of the man of God because you don't recognize who you are serving and why you are serving. You are not serving for any type of material gain for yourself. You are serving because of the one that made a sacrifice way out on Calvary's cross for you. And everything that you do ought to be for his benefit and for his glory. If somebody tell you good job, that's all right. Somebody tell you keep on going, that's all right. But you realize at the end of the day, all praise is due to him that created us. We are tempted in the area of money more than any other area. We all search for ways to be sure that we come out on top when our money is counted. We cheat on taxes. Man, teach, tell the truth, man. Tell the truth, Shane. Cut corners every way we can. We'll drive 10 miles. To save two cents on the gallon of gas. Now tell the truth. Raise the devil if you get short change. But you keep quiet if they pay you too much. In fact, if you will let me have a look at your checkbook register, I will tell you what is number one in your life. Let me look at a bank and say, I'll tell you what is number one in your life. The stewardship of your money says a lot about you. The stewardship of what you have, to, it says a lot about who you are. Now, Abram's response is classic. He would not take a dime from the king of Sodom. He knew who the money belonged to. He would not take a dime for him. He would rather trust the Lord to take care of him than to feel like he owed any man anything. He did not want this wicked king to get his hooks up into him. Now listen to this. There are some folk who will do anything for a dollar. But you got to be the type of person that will determine that you will never succumb to the temptation to get a dishonest dollar. Right. If we will exercise integrity in the handling of your resources, you can rest assured that God is going to look after all the rest of your needs that you got. We stayed asking God for a million. We can't manage a hundred. Lord, I want a thousand. You can't manage ten cents. You know, you get ten cents. You, you know, you walking around, head up in the air, you and everything. You don't even know God did. Come on, come on. What God has given you, you got to know how to manage it. You got to know how to steward it. If I give you ten seeds, I expect ten plants. If I give you 20 seeds, I expect 20 plants because you've gone now, you've planted it, you've watered, you've cultivated, you've done the work to make sure that you get the outcome that you are looking for. But if you take what God has given you and you hide it and you sit on it, I don't know a plant that can grow in darkness, but, but when you sit on it, and, and, and you just put it, put it away and, and you pinch at it just that as you need. But don't worry about what God needs. You a bad man and you a bad woman. Because let me tell you, whatever you got, how much you got, don't a dime of it belong to you. Preacher, I, you, I work for it. I know. Who gave you the strength to go clock in? Who gave you the job? Something is wrong with a blessed child of God that won't bless the one that gave them the blessing. So we ought to be like Abram in this respect that we recognize what's ours 
and what's the Lord's. And he said, he said, you know what? I don't want none of it. It does not belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. Man, that's integrity. That, that's integrity if I have ever saw it. He was the one out there waging war. He was the one out there taking the spoils from the cities. But when it got time to enjoy the harvest, all the money and stuff that they had got from, I don't want none of that. That goes to the Lord. And can I tell you something? When you put God first, and when you look after the house of God and the needs of God, you'll be like David. I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging for bread. Why was Abram able to give like that? Because he know his daddy owned the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver and the gold, all of that belongs to my father. And my daddy has already told me that in my seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. So if God has told you he's going to take care of you, why we can't take care of him? Well, why, 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 can't, why, can't we take, why can't we take care of him? And, and this ain't, you know, just a rant on money. This, this is not what that is. You, do, do you know that giving is a part of your worship? And that when you don't give like you're supposed to, that your worship can be in vain? That, 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 that's, that's Bible. I mean, it, it's in your Bible. Is, 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 is it there? The Bible says that on, upon the first day of the week, they had set aside. They didn't wait until it was offering time to start scrabbling through to see what they was going to give. They already had set aside. When you go back to the beginning, when they went and sold everything that they had, they brought it and they laid it at the feet of the apostles, those that were given rule over it, and they distributed it as those that had need, had need. They took care of the affairs of the house of God. They took care of those in the house of God that needed a sister so that lets me know the greenback make the horse trot. Just like it takes finance for you to live, it takes that for the house of God to go on and to do the things that it needs to do. So, so, I, I'm, so I'm just saying this to say, are you worshiping in vain? Or is your worship acceptable and pleasing in the eyesight of God? When, when a theme for this year was chosen, we said that we were what? All or none. All or none. I, I, ain't, I ain't had no money up my sleeve. I ain't got nothing in my pocket. I'm all in. I'm all dedicated. And when you are all in, that means if there's a need, I'm going to do what I can to meet that need. Because I recognize... Y'all remember in closing when Peter and them was out on the boat and they were fishing. And it says that they had fished all night and they hadn't caught anything but a bunch of garbage and debris had got caught up in the net. And it says that, you know, when Jesus came, they saw Jesus. Jesus said, let down your net on the other side for, for, for a jar of fish. And the Bible says that when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, so much so that their nets began to break. And it said, when they had this done, they beckoned unto the partners, which are with Simon, that they should come and help them to gather the bounty that they had got. Do you see how blessed you can be when you simply do what God has called for you to do? And, 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 and the, real, the real lesson in that story is that God didn't just bless Peter to bless Peter. He blessed Peter so that he could in turn be a blessing. To somebody else. Hey, you, you come over here and get some of these fit, man. I know y'all ain't got nothing in your high. Come over here, get you a few. You come and get some. You and everybody get some. He blessed him, and he in turn blessed somebody else. 
you go back all the way to when they were choosing, they were, Moses and them, they were sending out the different tribes of people. And when it, God was giving each tribe a portion of the land, and when it came time for, when Moses came down off the mountain, and he asked a question, he said, who is on the Lord's side? It was the tribe of Levi that said, we are on the Lord's side. And we know that the tribe of Levi is where the priests come out of. And if you go back, he said, okay, y'all will get this portion of the land. You'll get this portion of the land. You'll get that portion. You'll get that portion. But Levites, my people, you shall inherit my house. So if he gave it to you, you're supposed to take care of it. If, if, if he's giving us stewardship over it, we're supposed to be looking after it. We got to do what's necessary to make sure that the house of God is maintained. Has he ever let you go hungry? Has he, ha, ha, has he ever just left you out there by yourself and just let the devil just do whatever he wanted to and just say, hey, you by yourself. He's never deserted you, so let us not desert him. I, I, I know something has happened over these past few months and I know a lot of us may feel like we're not as connected as we were. Feel like, you know, there's some space, you know, I'm, you know, I was getting to a place in God and I was doing so good, but it feels like, you know, I, I just don't have that same feeling. I, I'm feeling disconnected. Let us make a decision to get back all in. Yeah. Yeah. Let, us, let, us, let us make a decision. My fire will not be quenched. Simply because we're dealing with the pandemic. Yeah. Can I ask, and I want to do a poll real quick. How many of y'all have been taken care of all throughout this pandemic? Amen. Your, your, your light stayed on. You know, you, you was able to watch Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. You know, all that was taken care of. You know, you, you even got a little stimulus. Was able to go out and buy some stuff that you couldn't normally buy. Because you had an extra $1,200 that the Lord had just decided to send your way. And oh, Lord, if it be your will, you'll send us another in a couple of weeks. All praise is due to God. But. Oh, it's on the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you meaning to tell me that even in a global pandemic amidst now 500 and some years of racial oppression you mean to tell me that after 500 and some years of brutality against the black man and black woman that God is still taking care of us? You mean to tell me he don't fall, he don't change, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? You mean to tell me that he's still looking out for you, still making ways for you? You mean to tell me that? So if you're really going to sit there and tell me this, why don't we act like it? We got to be all in with God. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. In your worship, it ought to be done with integrity. In your singing to God, it ought to be done with it. In your giving to God, it ought to be done with it. Everything we do for him, we ought to do it with the spirit of integrity. And then when you get out of here, in your regular zone, you ought to live with integrity. You ought, you ought, to, live, you ought to live with integrity. Just, just for an example, I never told anybody on my job I was a preacher. Ne never did that. You know, I, you know, I hang, you know, I talk, you know, with everybody, you know, whatever. But, you know, apparently, you know, folk go on your Facebook, you know, and stuff like that, you know, whatever. I try to block it where people can't do stuff. Now, you know, when people go on there, you know, and they go on there and they was looking and they just, you know, found out, you know, who I, I was or whatever. So now I can be going to my job some mornings. Just like the other day, I had a girl come to me. She found out she was pregnant, got put out the house, et cetera, stuff like that. She said, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. A, a gentleman, the week before that, he comes to work every day with his rug. Because at high noon, he got to face the east. And he got to pray to Allah. 
But when his mama died, he came to me and said, I want you to pray for me. You don't even believe in my God, but you want me to pray for you. Because let me tell you, you can let your light so shine in such a way that I don't care what a person is going through. I don't care what a person is dealing with. I don't care what background a person may be from. When they see you, they see a light. And when they see that light, they see what it is that they are standing in the need of. And they'll come to you. But you got to be a person that lives in such a way that people can see the light of God in your life. Do people feel comfortable coming to you and telling you secrets? Or do they not tell you anything because they know everybody else is going to know about it? Do, do people feel comfortable coming to you and, 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 and confiding in you with the things that they are dealing with? Everything that we do, conversations ought to be held in integrity. Everything that we do. We ought to do it with the spirit of integrity. So, so I want us to take a, 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 a note from Abraham this morning. And that is, let's put God first. Let's put the house of God first. The needs of God first. We like coming here and have a nice cool air when it's warm, don't we? I know. We like to have lights and when events and stuff happen, you know, we like to eat good, you know, buy some greens for sister coffee to cook, you know, and whatnot. If we want to do that, and I believe I'm talking to some people that don't just want to do what you, you've done, but you want to do even more for God. If that's true, we're going to have to be people that believe in the principle of giving back to God. Take him at his word. If he told you that he'll provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory, what you worried about? He gonna provide. But man, I ain't got but $15 in my account and I don't get paid in two weeks. But some of y'all in here know you serve a God that'll make that $15 last as long as you need it to, as long as he needed to. And, and, and some of us know God are giving, he'll hold you over until he gets you to where he wants you to be. God is not going to leave you by yourself. He's not going to let you go without. You're not going to want for anything because you God child. But don't let him want for anything. Don't let his house go without. And we have plenty. He's going to continuously make sure you got plenty. Because you're his child. And he will always provide for you. But let's make sure that we're doing our part by God. Amen. Amen. It's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. Let us, let us be people of integrity. How are your morals today? You know there are Christians that don't have morals? A lot of Christians don't have no type of moral compass. Do anything how they want to do it, when they want to do it, who they want to do it. They, they, just, they just do it. They don't care. But you ought to be a person of integrity. And starting today, I want you to practice this. Before you do anything, before you say anything, before you act on something, I'm serious. I want you to do this. Ask yourself this simple question. Would he be pleased? But before you say it, before you act, before you do, ask yourself that simple question. Would God be pleased? And if you have to second guess, the answer is no. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, we'll do whatever we can to get the answer that we want. In closing, there was a police officer. They like donuts. I don't, I don't know why that's a stereotype. <laughs> and he had been saying that he was going to stop eating them donuts, Elder Denson. And he drove by the Krispy Kreme one day and just so happened one day, but the devil, the red light was on. <laughs> and he came by and he, he saw the red light, but it wasn't no parking spaces. And he said, well, Lord, if you want me to have two dozen of these donuts, you will make sure I get a parking spot right in front of the door. 
And after his 10th time of driving around the block, there it was. He made sure he got him a spot right outside the door. Can you see what a person is willing to do to get what they want? Can you see what a person is willing to do to justify what they are doing? I can't think of one good reason to justify why I don't give to God and why I'm not committed in that. So since I ain't got no reason, I ought to simply get straight and do as I am supposed to do by God. He's been doing right by you all this time. I think it's about time some of us start doing right by God. Amen. If you're here today um, and you are not a Christian, you stand outside of the ark of safety on this morning. You have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb. I beck and I plead with you. This opportunity is the greatest opportunity that could ever be presented to anybody. And that is the opportunity that a person has to give their soul, mind, body, themselves all over to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would have you to know that even before you were conceived in the belly, in the womb of your mother, God knew all about you. He had a plan for your life. He told the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. I knew everything about you. I knew you were going to be this, how you was going to do it when you go. I knew everything about you. Well, preacher, if God knew all of that, can he not keep me from doing certain stuff? Well, God knows everything, but he gives every human being something called free will. You can know what the right thing is to do, but if you have a desire to do evil, you're going to choose whichever one that you want to do. So before you were even formed in your mama's belly, before you conceived, before you said goo goo ga ga, God knew everything about you, had a plan for your life. He said somewhere, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. God has a plan for your life and that plan did not start when you were born, but that plan goes all the way back to when there was nothing but darkness on the earth. When the earth was out forming void, he still knew everything about you. And, and, and as we go back, we go back and as we were reading today and we're talking about, we was talking about Melchizedek and how Melchizedek is a, a mirror image, a picture of the man Jesus Christ and how he had no beginning. He had no ending. And if you go to John chapter 1, it says that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh and came and dwelt among us. And we beheld him as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. We, we read that in John chapter one, talking about Jesus. So it lets us know that God was talking to somebody when he said, let us make man in our own image. Because as there are three parts in the Godhead, we identify them as three personalities of deity. God the Father, always been in heaven. God the Son was born of a woman, came and dwelt among us. God the Holy Spirit, now that Jesus has gone back, now indwells each and every one of us that are blood-washed believers of Christ and will keep us until the day that Christ returns. But he has prepared a way, a means, that all of those that are lost have a way to be found. All of those that are without Christ can be with Christ if they would but make a decision to obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that they were gathered together there in the upper room and there came down the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the place where they were sitting and it sat upon them cloven tongues like and unto fire and they all began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. Those looking on to them said, are these men not drunk? They said, no, these men are not drunk, seeing as it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel in the last day. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see vision this is that which was prophesied by Joel and Peter began to preach that first gospel sermon there on the day of Pentecost and he let them know this same Jesus that you crucified is coming back to judge the world and after Peter finished preaching to them he said they asked him a question they said men and brethren what shall we do? 
And his response was, repent. It's so simple. We are the ones that complicate salvation. He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Not some of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That, that is what he told them. And can I tell you something? If it was good for them on the day of Pentecost, it's good for us. Because if my biblical knowledge serves me correct, that happened in the New Testament, right? Are we not still living in it? So he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And after that, because a lot of folk think this, you know, I was baptized. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. And I'm going to stay saved. But the Bible says that he that endureth until the end shall be saved. What do I have to endure if it's a one-time act? You remember what Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Meaning that the day that you make a decision for Christ, you got to renew that decision every day of your life after that day until time and eternity shall be no more. You got to finish it, and if you finish it, there'll be laid up for you a crown of righteousness. Not just for you, but for all those that love Christ and his appearing. I know we're back to the old normal. I've been up here over an hour. All praise is due to God. All praise. All praise is due to him. <laughs> I know, I know. And, we, and, and, and we're so thankful for that. So if you're here today, you come by hearing this word. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says, So then faith come by hearing, hearing after the word of God. After you hear it, you must believe. Upon, after belief, you must repent of your sins. What is repentance? It is a change within my mind that produces a change within my action. After repentance with my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And after confession, you are willing to be baptized with Christ, have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come up before you, and this life and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord, according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 247, will add you to his body. Your sins will be washed away. God will give you a new clean slate and a new start. And if you do right, you'll be on your way to heaven. So my brother, my sister, if you're here, today and maybe you're here you're already a Christian but you're just standing in the need of prayer maybe you're watching you have prayer requests we pray that you would send those in to us or maybe you are watching here this morning you say hey my soul needs Jesus reach out to us we'll help you the best day we can so if you're here today you're subject to the invitation come now it's together we stand and sing the song of invitation my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah say now